Okay, hi everybody. So today I thought it's probably time that we started learning object-oriented programming. And so we're going to look at some examples, but before we do, I'd, I want you guys to get some formal um, information for, for object-oriented programming. And so I've Googled here Byte of Python Swaroop, and if I click on that Swaroop's website, and we scroll down on the left, notice this is version 3. Um, here we have a chapter on object-oriented programming. I'm going to click that. And I'd like you guys to read this chapter okay, on Swaroop. Now, the other thing is, if you don't want to read it online, you can actually download this book. It is a free book. And uh, it's, it's uh, okay to copy it because it's under the Creative Commons license. Um, if you click uh, on my original uh, first course website, so artcolition.com CS1, and then you go to Getting Started, and if you click on Book, you'll notice that you can go to the website, but also you can download the PDF here. And if you click that, uh, it takes you to here, and then if you have an e-reader, you can even use an EPUB file, but here's the Byte of Python in PDF format, and um, you can open it with, or probably you're going to open it with Adobe Acrobat Reader or something like that. Uh, but you can download it and then you'll have it on your computer. Okay? Okay, so now that you've kind of read through the uh, Swaroops chapter on uh, object-oriented programming, I want to kind of help you guys wrap your head around this. So first of all, think of something like a chair. Okay, um, A chair can look like this. A chair can also look like that. Um, a chair can have many legs. A chair, you know, how many legs does a chair have? What's the color of the chair? Um, what's the height of the chair? And um, does the chair have, uh, is, it, is it rollable? Can it roll? Um, can it also, can a chair uh, swivel? There's many characteristics of a chair, okay? And so when you code with object-oriented programming, you're actually, what you're doing is you're creating a new type of, a, like a new data type. And that data type uh, contains other data types. So, for example, uh, the number of legs that this chair has, well, that could be an integer. The color, well, that could be a string. The height, uh, that could be a float. Does it roll? Uh, that could be a Boolean. Okay, does it swivel? That would also probably be a Boolean. So now when you take all this and you could have other things too, for example, uh, you know, you could have something like uh, where is the chair? Where is the location of the chair right now? Um, so there's many characteristics that you can incorporate into the, this new data type called a chair. And so if you wanted to do something like that, uh, all you'd have to do is declare the new data type. Okay, so let's take a look at some code. Uh, let's go to our interpreter. I'd like you to kind of follow along with me. We're going to make a new class simply by typing in class. And in this example, you know, we could type in chair. And that's it. Now, as in the example here, 
uh, on in Swarup's textbook. Um, they have here, they have the class and then the name that you're going to create. So this is something that you decide to create. And they, they've called it person here. I've, I've come up with a chair object. But then what's important is this function here. Notice this is a function. And you know it's a function because it starts with def. But this, when I first learned programming in Python, I was like, what is that? That looks quite odd. And so this is, ac this is actually two under uh, lines. So, and it's, there's actually a specific name. It's called double under, but it's abbreviated into dunder. Uh, it sounds funny, I know, but uh, that's what it is. So it's dunder in it dunder. And, oops, I, so here it is. Notice that I really want to kind of talk about the vocabulary here as well. This, this is a function, right? It's called, because it starts with def, but in object-oriented programming, functions that belong to a class are called methods, okay? So that's important to, to note that new vocabulary. Second thing is, is that this method called init is special in that you don't call it directly. It gets called when you create that data type. So watch this. So if I come over here and I go def under under, oops, not three of them, init under, oops, okay, under under bracket. Now, here's something important. If you'll notice, the first variable to this function is called self. And that is the instance of the class. I'll explain what I mean by this in a second. This is something you don't actually pass to it. And, um, and so let's go back to the code and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to go self here. And by the way, just to let you guys know, please don't ever try this, but you don't have to use the term self. But if you don't, every other Python programmer in the world is going to look at you like this and think, what the heck are you doing? So the, all right, okay, so we're back here. But essentially what I'm asking you here is don't use anything other than self. Okay, that's, that's the standard way of, using for that first variable that you have to supply. Now the, the next variable, uh, everything after that, it's up to you. So, you know, let's be creative here. Obviously chairs don't really have names. Uh, we could give it a color and maybe we could just stop with that right now. And so essentially, um, I'm just gonna say, all right, let's just give the, let's just give the, the chair a color. Now, this argument gets passed, so we're going to have to do something with it when we create this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make uh, an instance variable, and so please recognize that word called instance, and I'm going to go self.c. Now I could, do, I could do self dot color, but I want it to be kind of clear that, uh, and I'm going to say equals color, okay? And that's it. And so now, um, I'm now going to get out of this. So that's my, that's my whole class that I've made. And now I'm going to create an instance of a chair. Okay, so let's make an instance of this uh, chair class. Uh, I kind of thought about it and I thought, you know, what would you call a chair? And so I came up with the idea of stool. And uh, so a stool is a chair. And so if we wanted to actually create the chair, we'd have to go like that, okay? Now, if you'll notice, if I do this, it's gonna say, uh-oh, there's a problem. And that's because when I call this, when I type this in, I'm actually trying to create a chair, but it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because here, 
it says that I require a color. Okay, so if I did this and I said, for example, oops, uh, let's say I said red. So there's a red, a red stool. Now when I do it, it works. And now, see, so now, now you gotta ask yourself, hey, wait a minute. So you called this function, this, this method, the init method, which by the way is also called uh, the instantiator or to instantiate, which means, which is another, I guess, synonym, or another word for create, right? It creates this chair, but the, the instance of it is stool. That means, believe it or not, this variable receives stool. But I didn't type it that way. Notice, I, I didn't type it this way. I didn't say, I didn't say uh, stool comma red. This is not gonna work. See, this doesn't work. But in fact, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm at, so I wouldn't type it that way. I would type it this way. But I want you to know that's what this is. That's what this self is. It's the instance of the, so like, for example, if I made a, another, if I made another chair, okay, uh, let's call it a lazy chair, lazy equals chair, and let's make this chair um, brown, okay? So now I have two instances of a chair object, of the chair class. This one is, this, this instance is called lazy, and the other one is called stool. But notice, I can now access this attribute of the class by going dot C. So if I, for example, if I go uh, print lazy dot C, I'm gonna get brown. And if I go print stool dot C, I'm gonna get red. So that's kind of cool. Now, here's a question. What if we wanted to be able to create a chair and we want to say, listen, let's just make, if, if we make a chair, and I, I guess I could think of another chair. I, I don't know. I'm just going to call it A. If I call a chair and I, I just want to be able to create it like that. But if I don't specify the color, I want it to be black. Because, you know, black's the best color anyways for a chair, right? So um, how do I do that? Well, what I'd have to do is I would have to go back to my code and go back up. Okay, so essentially I'm going to go back to my uh, chair class where I've defined in it. And now look what I'm going to do. I'm going to give the color a default argument. So by doing this, essentially what I'm saying now is, I'm saying, if I do not provide a color, then make it black. So before I had an error if I didn't provide the color, but now watch, if I say A equals chair, and I just go like this, now it works. And now if I wanna know the color of chair, if I, if I wanna know the color of chair A, I can now go. <coughs> I can now go a dot c, and it should be black, and it is. Okay. One thing I wanted you to notice here is that when I'm in this function, uh, sorry, in this uh, init method here, I'm setting the color to be a string. Okay. That means that self dot c, its data type is a string. So maybe I, I kind of glossed over that. Okay, so here is an example of a program that uses object-oriented programming. And I've created a dog class here. And notice I mentioned this, although now, because everyone's using Python 3, you won't actually uh, have to say that it inherits from object. But this is important, and that is that everything in Python is an object. Even integers are objects, strings are objects, even functions are objects. Python is 
a, a really good object-oriented language. And that's, I love it. I actually really like that about it, okay? Okay, so in this example, we've got this dog class. And in Python 3, we don't actually need to specify, as I mentioned, that we don't need to actually specify that what it's inheriting from. If we do not, it'll automatically inherit from object. Everything is an object, and so we can just delete this line here. And later, when we do inheritance, you'll see how we can um, inherit from uh, other stuff. But for now, let's go down in here into this function. Let's take a look. Let's skip this line alive here for a minute, and let's take a look at this init method here. And remember, every function, or another term is every method of a class, has to first accept the self argument. And don't use anything other than self, because that's kind of like a, a standard in Python. Now, here, I'm specifying the color and the breed of this dog class that I've created. And, and so here, I'm creating this variable called self. Now, remember something here. Whenever you use the term self dot, that means that that variable is an instance variable. That means every instance that you create, so notice I'm creating dogs down here on line 20 and 21 and 22. I'm creating Fido123, so I'm creating three dogs. Each one of those dogs, Fido1, Fido2, Fido3, is an instance. That means if I create a variable in here that starts with self, that means each and every individual instance FIDO1, FIDO2, and FIDO3 is go are going to have those fields, color, and breed. And I'm assigning them to what is passed and their default arguments. So if I pass nothing, as in line 20, I'm passing nothing to the instantiate uh, init method or in initializer, then it's going to select white poodle as the color and the breed of the dog. Now, there is this other thing here, and this one doesn't have self in front of it. Now, what is that? That's called a class method. So I think the bet one way in which I can explain this is with an image. Okay, so here I have in this image, I have the three dogs, Fido, one, two, three, and um, each one has their own color and breed. But see, here's the thing. Let's say every time, let's say I ha wanna have another attribute or another field saying how many dogs that are alive. So in this case, you can clearly see that there are three dogs alive. So I could, for example, go self.alive and give each and every one of these anim of these instances uh, the same variable. So now look what happens. When I create the first one, this one becomes one. When I create this one, now this one has to go, well, what's the other one? This one doesn't really know what the other one is, but let's just say somehow we were to put a two here. Now, if we keep creating them, then this is now this is wrong. Now there's now now of course when we after we create this one we have to go back and we have to fix this one to make it a two. Then we create this one. Now this one and this one are wrong. We have to put three here and we have to put three here, right? Now when we create another one, uh-oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, and this one, which was three, is also wrong. So, so notice, imagine if we had thousands of these. This would be ridiculous. You'd have to go and change this attribute in all of them. This is not the way it's done. So, 
let's get rid of this because that's not how we we this is that's not the best way to do this the way to do this is to create a class variable called alive such that it's this this variable is shared amongst all of them but there's only one copy there isn't a copy for everybody just like color and breed there's a copy for everybody but not for alive now and everyone shares it which is nice because now when you create this the first one this becomes a one when you create this one you simply add one to this class variable and it becomes a two you create another one you add one and it becomes a three and so in this way uh, it's very efficient at what it's used for and it's called a class variable so let's take a look at the code here oops no, here it is. And the code, notice on line four, I don't have self in front of it. This makes it a class variable, not an instance variable. Because remember, self is, is the instance, right? <clears throat> so going back and iterating again, or I should say repeating again, FIDO1 gets passed as the first argument to the init method of dog. So that means self is FIDO1 on line 20. So that means FIDO1.color, FIDO1.breed, but notice here it's not FIDO1, this is dog. Now wait a minute, what's dog? Well, dog is the name of the class. And what's the, what this is saying is, is it's saying that alive does not belong to an instance of this dog class. It belongs to the whole class, like to all instances, not just one. So we're basically incrementing dog.alive by one. And the cool thing now is that every dog knows that there's one more dog. That's good. Um, then the next function I have is something called speak and again because it's a function in the class it has to receive self first and then all it does is it just prints rough rough now here this is an interesting one remember any function that starts with dunder is special okay it's a it's like a built-in one this one speak I just made up myself but in it and str are built into all Python classes str is the string representation of the class and what that means is that when we call print on an instance of a of a dog class then it essentially it runs this function which which says this dog is a you know, white poodle, for example. Okay? Okay, so I just converted this to an F string because I like them better, and this is Python 3. Why not? Uh, also, it, it helps because if any of the uh, fields were integers, I don't have to change them to string before doing concatenation as I would with plus. But with an F string, I don't care about it. It just works. So um, there you go. Here's the second dog I make. Uh, it's a black lab. And in this one, I'm explicitly sending the uh, color and the breed to the init method. And then I make another dog. And I make the two dogs speak, the first one and the second one. And I print the first two out and then I print out how many dogs are alive so try and predict what the output of this program is going to be ready so rough 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 
This dog is a white poodle, this dog is a black lab, and there's three of them that are alive. Okay? Um, all right, so we're back. So now, in this example here, this is kind of like the next example, a little bit more complicated. But let's take a look at, you know, when the dogs are born, when they die, and when they're alive. So here, obviously, is our init method, right? We All classes need this. And we're going to actually have a print statement here. This is, is, this is unusual. It, it's not regular to put a print statement in an init, in a dunder init dunder uh, function, but we are. And we're going to, just like before, set the breed and the color and increment uh, the class method alive, or sorry, the class field alive. And, and we're going to leave this speak method we put in here. And of course, we have our uh, str, dunder str, which I'm going to fix now. And there it is. Boom. I just fixed it to be an f string again. Um, so now, now there is dunder del. Now, dunder del is the function that ends up being called when an object is destroyed by the Python garbage collector. Yes, that's right. I know this sounds tremendously hokey, but uh, it's true. Python has a garbage collector. Now, what does this garbage collector do? Well, when variables are not referenceable anymore, Python says, you can't use this anymore because you can't access it anymore, so therefore, I'm going to destroy it. And when it does, it calls the dunder del dunder function. And so we're defining it here. We're saying uh, it's going to print something. And uh, maybe we should fix that one too. Okay, fixed. So it's now an F string as well. And so that looks good. And by the way, notice here on line 21, I'm decrementing dog.alive, the class variable. Right? And so now let's actually go into the code. Now this function here, birth, is not part of the class. Okay? Notice the indentation level. This is not part of the class. So let's go down and start the code. Okay, this creates FIDO1, FIDO2, and then FIDO1 speaks, FIDO2 speaks, and then let's print out both FIDO1 and FIDO2 because we have the dunder str uh, method defined. And then now we are going to find out how many dogs are alive before we run the birth function. And then we're going to call the birth function. And then we're going to find out how many dogs are alive after it. OK? Um, I'm actually going to uncomment that line just for now. And let's save this. And let's run it. And let's take a look at the output. OK, so this actually fails. There's a, that line, print FIDO3, this line fails. So specifically, um, I'm talking of, oops, let's try that again. OK, so specifically, it's this line, line 42, which fails. Now, why did it fail? Because FIDO3 was not created here. FIDO3 was created inside this function right there on line 25. That means when this function is over with, FIDO3 will be garbage collected because there's no way to reference it anymore. That function's not returning anything. So uh, that means that this function will run, but after the function's over with, FIDO3 is not going to exist. So let's actually fix that by commenting this line out. Okay, And let's try saving it. And let's try running it again, OK? But before we do, I got to get rid of this window here. OK, let's try running it again. Here we go. Yay, it ran. OK. So uh, yeah, so the queue here that you're seeing, that green queue, uh, that's not from the 
the program output. That's what I typed when I switched to that screen. So just ignore it. But the first two things that are output is a dog is born, a dog is born. So that's lines 31 and 32. Right? So what that's telling me now is that if I scroll up, it's the, it's the init method here on line 7 that's being run. And that's being run on lines 31 and 32 because that's what's calling the init method. It's actually in, instantiating a new dog. You're going to see a dog is born. Then I make dogs 1 and 2 speak. And there they are, rough, 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 rough. Then what do I do? Then I print FIDO1 and FIDO2. That means this function, the SDR function, gets called. And it says, this dog is a white mutt. This dog is a black lab. Because that's what I passed, right? The first one was the default arguments. FIDO1 has no arguments passed, so it becomes a white mutt. The second one, I passed black lab, and that's exactly what it is. OK? Now, let's scroll uh, down a little bit here. And so right here on line 39, print before birth call, there are two dogs alive. Now I call birth function, and then after the birth function, oh, sorry, let me go back. When I call the birth function, right here on line 25, I create FIDO3. That's where this comes in. FIDO3, a dog is born. Okay? And then I actually print uh, FIDO3 in funk. And I actually also print out the, its ID, which I think is associated something uh, to do with its memory location. Then it uh, prints out in function birth, dogs alive. There are three dogs alive. OK, so one, two, and three. Thing is, what's interesting about this now is that as soon as this function is over with, the, I don't do this. Python is doing this automatically. It's saying you're not going to be able to access this variable anymore because it's a local variable to the birth function. So therefore, once this function's over with, the Python garbage collector says, I'm going to delete it. And the way it deletes it is it actually looks to see if there is an, a dunder del function. And guess what? There is. I've defined it right there. And so it actually calls this function uh, after deleting it. And so that's when you see print the dog died, the, the white mutt died. And why was it a white mutt? It's because I didn't pass it any arguments here. And so therefore, it was a white mutt. So, so this line is from my dunder del function which Python garbage collector called. I didn't call that. OK? And then after, uh, on line 44 here, it says, after the birth function, how many dogs do you have alive? Well, that's two. After birth function, I got two. OK, so now uh, we're on line 46, which is an input, which is blocking. So now I'm going to hit Enter. And then after that, we're going to go into a loop and create a whole bunch of dogs. Ready? Watch. Boom. There it is. Now, notice what's happening here is I created 10 more dogs in a loop, right? Range 10, so 0 to 9. I created all these dogs, so a dog is born 10 times. But then it says, after loop, I have 12 dogs alive. Why? Because FIDO1 and FIDO2 are still alive, plus the 10 I created in this loop makes 12. So it says after loop dog alive is 12. Okay, But now here's what's cool. Where the heck are all these dogs dying from? And the answer to that is, guess what? Line 52, <laughs> I know this is kind of like, kind of morbid, right, if you're an animal lover, you know. Uh, no dogs were hurt in the making of this video. So what's going on here, right, is that one on line 52, when the program finishes, 
That's when Python actually says, listen, this program's done with, so I'm actually going to delete all the variables that, are, that have been created in this program. And so it's actually calling the del, the dunder del function, because the program is over. And that's why, and that's why it's, deleting all, it's, it's deleting all the dogs. So these were the, remember, these two were the, the first dogs that I created, and then it, it, it kills all the rest. Pretty cool, huh? So just as a side note, I mean, in this example that we have here, uh, I have print statements in both the init here on line 7 and also on line 20 in the dunder del. In, in a real program, you don't, you don't put print statements in these functions. Um, you would do other housekeeping things. Uh, for example, you might decide to like delete a, a temporary file, or you might delete, decide to close something, or um, specifically in terms of like destroying um, or releasing memory, you don't have to do that in Python because Python has its own garbage collector, as I, as I said. But in other languages like C++, uh, the, the, the dunder del is actually called the destructor and you would actually have to manually release uh, memory that you allocated previously. But this, this is not C++. In any case, I wanted you to understand how things are working and that's the reason for putting those print statements in there. It's just for learning purposes. Okay, so that's kind of like the end of my introduction uh, to object-oriented programming. Now, we're going to have more lessons on this coming up, but I do recommend a couple of uh, readings, and um, one of them is uh, Python uh, Swaroop, uh, ch .com. Uh, he's got a free online book and it's really nice and he has a chapter on object-oriented programming I recommend that and also if you just simply google for Python oop uh, I like this one by, uh, by uh, program is com as well that's that's not bad as well so uh, have a look through those read through those and then uh, I think you'll be in better shape for uh, the next lesson. See you next. See you next time.